Well, we're going to be observing the apparent motion of stars over the course of a night on a May evening. A beautiful thing to do is to go out during the night and watch the stars and, and you can actually observe that they don't stay in the same spot over an evening. So using this program called Starry Night, we're going to be able to speed up time so we can see this together. And here you can see the apparent motion of stars over a night. And this is happening over extremely sped up time. We have the eastern horizon over there on the left. We have the western horizon on the right and the south is in the middle. We also notice that the sun and the moon are making the same path across the sky. So we're going to watch this again. And you should notice that the stars are rising in the east, arcing across the sky to the south, and they're setting in the west, just like our sun and our moon do. You can see a crescent moon there following that pattern, as well as the sun again. So all these motions are the same. There must be some underlying reason for them, and that is due to the Earth's rotation. So because the Earth rotates from the west to the east, objects appear to rise in the east and then move across the sky and set in the west. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump to sunset again. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to show the stick figure constellations so that you may be able to see this motion a little bit better. And these are constellations you see in the May, in the late spring sky. So you can see Virgo here as one constellation, and Leo is setting now, and Achilla and Delphinus, Delphinius. So again, these constellations are following that pattern of rising in the east, arcing across the sky to the south, and setting in the west. And these stars are doing this even during the day. We just don't see them because the sun is the brightest star because it's nearest to us. And all the other constellations are washed out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change our view and we're going to look to the north instead of facing south. Now we're going to notice that there's a different pattern here. So observe a time-lapse view of the stars over the course of an evening looking in the northern part of the sky. We're going to jump back to sunset, and you can see that we have a counterclockwise motion of the stars. They look like they're spinning in a circle. And we can see one of our noteworthy constellations here, that is Ursa Major. But of course, we can see the Big Dipper the best in Ursa Major. The Big Dipper is just part of Ursa Major, which is also called the Great Bear. You can see the head and the body of the bear there. But the Big Dipper is just a little part of the Great Bear, which I'm highlighting or going over or tracing in that picture right there. That's the most easy part of that constellation to see. And we know that those two pointer stars are going to point directly at another famous star, Polaris, or the North Star. Now, focusing on Polaris, or the North Star, we're going to, again, set time in motion here. And you should notice that Polaris is not moving as the rest of the stars circle around it. So when we look in the North, we have stars and constellations, which are called circumpolar, which means they circle around Polaris. But this is only if you look north. And let's take a look at that again.
Now, why this is happening is due to that we're looking at the direction of the axis of the Earth's rotation. The North Star is pointed right there in the direction of the Earth's axis. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to another time during the year. So instead of doing May, we're going to do November. So here we are in November. We have the stars still rising in the east, arcing across the sky in the south, and setting in the west. But we have some new constellations here. And here's a famous winter constellation, or fall and winter constellation, called Orion. We can see Orion's belt there. Famous Orion's belt. And we can see another. We also have the constellation Taurus, which we can see there, which is Taurus the bull. We can see the horns of the bull there. And we're going to watch as we see the same pattern again, but we have different constellations making that pattern. Let's jump to sunset. There now is a quarter phase of the moon as well. So same pattern, different constellations. So we have something else going on here too, other than the Earth's rotation. We have the Earth's revolution. The Earth is in a different part of its orbit, and we're actually seeing a different part of the universe, a different part of a Milky Way galaxy here. Now we're going to look at the northern part of the sky again, and we have Polaris again. We have the Big Dipper, but oriented a little different at this time of year. And we again see that same counterclockwise movement around Polaris. And those constellations that are around Polaris are actually very similar the whole year long. We can see Draco and Ursa Minor and Cepheus and Ursa Major. They are especially the ones we're going to see all year. Now we're going to actually try to start to explain what we're seeing in terms of an Earth view rather than looking at the star view. So here we have the Earth rotating from the west to the east. And as a location on Earth rotates into sunlight, that's when we have our sunrise. And then when we finally rotate out of the sun, that is our sunset. But when we rotate out of the sun, we lose that star, but we gain countless others. So here's the United States about to have its sunset. And we can see certain stars on that side of our galaxy. But as we spin around more, those stars will start to disappear and new ones will start to appear as we are seeing a different region of the galaxy. And then eventually, as the Earth rotates into the daylight, we're just going to see the sun. So there are the stars we see when, the first, when we first have sunset. These are the stars we're going to see later in the night as we approach sunrise. And then finally, the sun is going to rise and we're just going to see the sun. So this explains why stars appear to move over the course of a night. It's the Earth rotating. So now we're going to see why we see different constellations at different times of the year by observing the Earth's orbit or revolution around the Sun. So as the Earth makes its spaceship-like flight around the Sun, we're going to see the days rapidly go by throughout the year. And we're going to stop here for a moment so we can see if the Earth's in this position we can see stars on the nighttime side of the Earth, but we don't see any stars if we're looking this direction because the sun is so bright, it's our closest star, it blinds us to all the stars over there. 
but we can see the stars on this side when the Earth rotates to the dark side, opposite, opposite the Sun. So during the daytime, we can see, we could see stars if the Sun was shut off for some reason. Now we're going to bring the Earth to the May 14th part of its orbit and look at the stars we would see over there, but the stars over here we would not see because the Sun is in the way. Okay, now remember that because now we're going to go to the opposite, opposite sit side of the Sun, which is going to be November. And if you remember, we looked at those constellations in May and November using Starry Night before. Here it is autumn now, and we're going to move time a little bit farther ahead. And now things have reversed. We can see the stars on the opposite side that we did before. So these stars are viewable now because the sun is no longer in our way, whereas the, on the other side, these would be um, only viewable during the day, but of course the sun is too bright for us to see them. So now what's left is for us to explain why when we look at the northern part of the sky, we see the stars appear to circle Polaris. And if you remember, the North Pole is lined up with Polaris. That's why it is our North Star. So Polaris is directly in line with the Earth's axis of rotation. And so if you imagine yourself looking up at a ceiling directly above you and spinning around in a circle, that point is going to be fixed, whereas everything else is going to look like it is going to move in a circle and you're going, to, you're going to get very dizzy. Well, that's the same idea here. Polaris is that point directly above us and everything appears to spin around it. Not that the stars are spinning, but that the Earth is spinning. So those circumpolar stars, or those stars that circle Polaris, are going to only be viewable if we look north. The other stars are going to follow their east to west arc. So now we're going to review our main ideas here. The first one is that stars appear to rise in the east, arc across the sky to the south, and set in the west due to the Earth's rotation. This happens over a night. And it's due to the Earth's rotation from west to east. The moon, the sun, follow that pattern as well. If we look in the northern part of the sky, however, what we're going to see is the circumpolar stars making a circle around the fixed Polaris right there in the middle. And of course, our famous one is Ursa Major. Of course, the Big Dipper is part of that. And the last thing is that we see different constellations at different seasons and months of the year. So here we are at 8 o'clock at night in October, and you see these constellations, now November, different ones, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. And here is September to end. So these are wonderful things you can observe for yourself if you just take the time to view the beautiful night sky.